Hi, this XUX. This video is on the uh, earnings call Q4 uh, uh, and FY uh, 2020 uh, for Lordstown Motors, the beta one and two, some news, and uh, at the very end, a leak. So let's get started. Here's the uh, uh, kind of a table of context. Earnings call one, the first is a summary cliff note style. The way I've recorded this is you can, t you can take a look at this again and you can uh, pause each, slot, each spot in the video and you can read uh, what the notes are. It was an hour long and uh, I've summarized it. Uh, there's a video of the beta builds rolling off the line at uh, Lordstown and some uh, information on the Baja San Felipe 250 race that uh, the endurance has entered it. So let's get started. Okay, here's uh, slide one, uh, the CEO, many topics were covered, one hour call, uh, September 2021, full production, uh, 500 employees now, 1,000 by December, one off the line every six minutes in 21, every four minutes in 2022. I believe the crews, they're taking out one a minute, uh, 57 beta trucks are being built, two were launched today they got 20k demand right now arrangements reasonable efforts with homer enterprises uh, homer enterprises has two million lease vehicles they had to be very cagey about what uh what their sales were going to be and what their forecasts are because of this sec thing but as you'll see from later slides uh you got to read between the lines a little bit let me go on to the next slide here Okay, they're going to have vertical integration. They're going to build the battery and the motor in-house along with the stamping, the paint. The whole truck's going to be built in-house. Uh, they're going to put a 800,000 square foot production line in just for the batteries and the motors. Uh, they already, uh, the present vehicle is the endurance pickup. The next vehicle is going to be a high top van, which is going to be sold initially to Camping World and transformed into the first uh, EV RV uh, and then you know last mile delivery tradesmen you name it and uh, they say a demonstration vehicle quotes is going to be available of this high top van in, in the summer of 2021 so uh, in sub late September this year we're going to have the endurance final production vehicle production is going to start automated full production not hand built production, full production line running. And the van is going to come out, uh, the prototype uh, or the alpha is going to come out in uh, the summer of 2021, next year. Uh, the beta, and this is the president, Steve Schmidt, talking here. Uh, and he's the former Tesla director of manufacturing. Uh, he's the president of Lordstown Motor now. Uh, the beta is in production. I got video later of the two first two rolling off the line. Uh, PPV pre-production vehicle in July. Uh, the PPV will go to the National Transport Highway Safety Administration for crash testing. They have five-star rating on safety. They in the simulations they expect the same in real life. Uh, and they and Schmidt just went over how, how they did this so quickly. Uh, they had to retool an existing plant, and it, it gave them a year head start over starting a new factory. They also used the GM parts catalog for brakes and things like this that were already certified, saved months, six months over uh, regular certification. And you know, uh, Steve Burns has been working on this truck or a truck like this for about 12 years. So there's already been a lot of work. Anyway, they're on schedule to begin production late September, 2021. That's it. Coming off the line, six cars, uh, six minutes a car, right? Car every six minutes, actually pickup truck. Now, the CapEx, uh, they are spending money uh, to build up the capacity of line to 60,000 production. Before they, they're expecting 20K, that's what they're saying firmly for the first year. Uh, they've decided to build out the 60K. 
And they want, uh, so they've increased their CapEx over that. There's been some issues over them doubling their CapEx, but this is why they did it. Also, they wanted to accelerate the uh, high top van, uh, uh, the next vehicle that's going to come out. Uh, they also spent a lot of the CapEx as well, their own tooling. Uh, and they said this was due to COVID relays. There aren't any really uh, high uh, high descriptions of this. I'm just going to give you my interpretation. They had to have some final dies made for the stamping, I believe. And rather than go through a consulting house and design those and blah, 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 I believe they did all the designs in-house and had them manufactured. And that way their, their uh, IP and, and they own the, the tooling and so forth. And they own the CADs for the tooling and so forth. That's what I think it was. But anyway, their CapEx was double what they said it would be. Uh, second half of 2022 will be the uh, initial production of the high top van. Uh, the van is going to be the common skateboard with the endurance, four wheel drive, electric, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all the uh, in-house software for the vehicles will be developed. Uh, they're they're going to own it. It's all going to be IP. Uh, the motor design, they're going to own the IP for that. For North America, battery pack design and management system, they own the IP for that. And um, Irvine is doing the software. So they own the, uh, the uh, international uh, IP rights for this, uh, this, motor, uh, this motor configuration in any way uh, for vehicles uh, in North America. So there you go. I think that's the big news there. Okay, now this is going on to the CFO came up. Uh, he was third. First was the CEO, then the president, now the CFO. And there were a couple other people chiming in. I didn't get the names, you guys. I'll put a link to the conference call in the description if you want to go over it. So uh, FY 2020 Q4 uh, uh, results, uh, that was uh, ending uh, this month. Um, $38 million loss, uh, 125 million shares. You know, you guys can go over this finance stuff. I gloss over this because I'm not that interested in it. I'm going to go through it anyway. The expenses for the quarter was 11 mil. Uh, SGA was 700K on stock compensation. So they spent 28 mil on R&D, 130K on other. The uh, full results for the financial year 2020, $101 million net loss. Uh, and there is... Uh, 97, I think that should be 197 million Class A shares, or maybe it's 97 million. That may be a correction, sorry. Uh, the expenses were 29 mil. Uh, they had a $12 million merchant expense. They spent $74 million on R&D, uh, $3 million on compensation, and uh, they made $3 million on interest and sale of equipment. Um, They're pushing the production, okay? In Q4 2020, uh, they had 630 million cash. As of March 2021, they had uh, 90 million expenses and total assets of 767 mil. So the cash flow in 2020 kind of went something like this, 64 million for operations, 54 million on investments, that's tooling and stuff. And uh, they generated 748 million from the SPAC as of March 2021, uh, 113 million warrant conversions, total 179 million shares out with all warrants exercised, exercised not counting staff, uh, stop options. So you got 179 million sh uh, shares out. Uh, the liquidity is expected to end FY uh, 2021, March 2022 with $200 million cash on hand. So uh, they're set up to go into production and have cash to spare. 179 million uh, shares outstanding. Again, you guys can go over this. Uh, these are rough. Uh, I was taking notes during the call, but this will give you a rough idea. Okay, now these are the questions that were being asked by the investment bankers and uh, analysts that were uh, following the call. So let me just go through a few of these here. The CapEx was uh, higher. It's, it's like um, 
double what they said it would be. And it's uh, they want to build up to 60K uh, capacity on the line to put out 60K vehicles. They want to accelerate the van build out. And they had to build uh, tools uh, in-house uh, because of the COVID. And again, I think these were these stamping dies and other related issues uh, for the van and the endurance truck. Uh, the net loss expected is uh, 153 to $1.62 per share. And um, that's uh, 275 to $290 million loss in um, uh, 2021. Um, second quarter 2021, they'll be able to tell you what the, what the demand, they were very careful about talking about demand, but they were, you know, they were biting their tongue, uh, you could tell. After beta production, we'll only accept purchase commitments to match capacity. So uh, what they said was, uh, right now they're taking letters of intent. They're taking it up a level. In other words, they're going to commit to build them and people are going to commit to buy them, but there isn't going to be a contract, something along that line. Uh, anyway, they're getting real serious about the orders and they had to up that capacity to 60 K they were going to make it for 20 K. So they tripled it. I, I do believe there's a lot of demand for this vehicle. Uh, once these betas get out, I, I don't, uh, I think it's going to really take off and, you know, until the Ford F-150 electric comes out and this, uh, we're going to have to see, uh, you know, is this competitive? This is a pretty uh, economical vehicle compared. I don't know what Ford will come out with, but that's the F-150 is going to be the competition here. That's the number one ice fleet vehicle. Um, but, uh, you know, there is no F-150, and I believe they have a capacity to build more endurances than Ford has the F-150 electrics. So we're going to have to see. Uh, but they're going to have first mover. Uh, advantage and uh, anyway you're gonna have the first full-size EV pickup truck in mass production in the world in late September so uh, that's it uh, we're basically at the starting line here the betas are out uh, they're gonna get this uh, PPV vehicle out for crash testing uh, and then basically they're gonna you know start the production up my opinion I mean that's what they're the schedule they're given yeah, here's some other questions. Uh, one guy asked about the news flow. Uh, the beta they got out right now is really about 99% of the vehicle. It just needs like airbags. They're not going to have any hand production, start out building models by hand, and then go. They're going to go right to the production line. And right through uh, robotics and automation, they're not going to have this intermediate stage where they're building hand building models and sending them out. It's going from PPV testing right to production. And only Tesla has gotten this far, uh, you know, with an EV. Now, Holloman, and you can look up this name. I think I spelled that right. This is, uh, they do third party uh, fleets. They buy buy the vehicles and lease them to, to uh, uh, other uh, companies. They got two million vehicles under lease or leased out. 600,000 of them are pickup trucks. Uh, it's not in blood, but conditional sales. Uh, and I believe the number with Holloman, and, and again, they're being kind of dodgy about this because of the SEC. I mean, you can listen to the call yourself and make your own decision. I think their initial commitment is 20K or what they want to do is 20K. Don't quote me on that. Listen to the call yourself. Uh, but uh, this is going to be their big, and, and this is a big, fleet manager this is a big deal this is a big client they're going to send them the betas if they like them they're going to put them out and they're going to do 20k and then as steve burns was saying during the call hey these other clients they may break their leases on their ice pickup trucks their ford f-150s if they can see that they can save you know uh five times the money uh do five times less cost uh, with the endurance than f-150 ice they may break their leases and take the penalty just to put the uh, endurance in, okay? Um, 
And, you know, I don't know if they're going to be there. They aren't going to wait for the F-150 because the F-150, we don't know when it's going to be out. And we don't know what their production capacity is going to be on the F-150, although, or what the cost is going to be, so on and so forth. Anyway, getting back. Uh, so the Holloman is a big deal. The other one is Cam Camping World for the high top van. The CEO of Camping World did a press conference with uh, Steve Burns a while ago where they were kicking this around. And he said, we will sell every uh, electric RV you can give us. Every one you can make, we can sell. Because they have showrooms. They have a whole line of dealerships across the country. They have camping, campgrounds set up, RV grounds set up all over the place. And he said, uh, you know, they are waiting for this. Um, you got to understand, these RVs, first of all, the market for RVs is just going crazy since the Rona. I mean, sales are going through the roof. If you see any graphs on this, just look up a graph on the RV sales. People are buying them like crazy now. And the thing is, uh, Camping World has been, is one of the major sellers of RVs. But the, the other thing is, the rub is, all these ICE RVs, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they all have like a, a level two charger connection. And when they pull into these campgrounds, they plug in and there's like a level, a level two charger outlet on every spot that you park an RV. And uh, this is going to allow these electric RV owners, you know, they're going to buy them from Camping World. They're going to probably give them free charging or whatever, but they're going to know there's going to be charging at every campground. And they're going to have these electric RVs. It's going to be a beautiful thing because they're going to be able to go in. They're going to be able to charge them there. They're not going to have to worry about charging. They're not going to have the repairs, the wear and tear, and so forth that you have with an ICE engine. And they're going to be all electric vehicles. They're going to have all electric appliances in them. And, you know, they're going to be able to go off the grid for uh, who knows how many days with the battery pack that's in the, in the electric RV. So anyway, the CEO has said, we will sell everyone you could send us. And he's confident of that. So anyway, so right now, this, these are the, according to my reading between the lines, these are the two committed uh, parties that they can talk about or that they're inferring about are these two parties. And it's a pretty big demand level just with these two parties to get started. Um, Here's a question from Morgan Stanley on the Hub Motors. How much on vehicle testing? There's been a million miles of bench testing on these motors, which is what uh, Tesla had on the motors that are in the Model S and the Model X. But uh, people are wanting to know, uh, you know, how many uh, on-road testing miles are there? And, um, you know, I don't think Tesla had this. I mean, I don't know. They're, they're really bearing down on these motors. Anyway, uh, Elafi has 200,000 miles of on-vehicle testing. Lordstown Motor has 20,000 miles of on-vehicle testing. And the Alpha builds, 57 of them, are going to be out driven all over the place as well. And also, Alafi has 1 million miles of bench testing on these motors, running in all kinds of different conditions and so forth. So this motor has been vetted. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, everybody wants to know about the testing. Now, this is this is tell you how much these these analysts know about about uh, the companies they're covering and the technology they're covering. The Morgan Stanley goes Morgan Stanley analyst goes the spare uh, the spare wheel on the tr on the truck, the spare tire. You know, uh, with the integrated hub motor. You know, that's going to weigh something like 80 pounds more than a regular spare tire. Uh, where Where is the, the tire with the motor? Where, where are you going to carry it? Where are you going to put all this extra weight? You know, honestly, this guy is with Morgan Stanley. He's a Wall Street sector analyst. He's covering this com company. I hope I got the company right, Morgan Stanley. Anyway, the point is, it's an analyst, Wall Street. He's covering this company. He's covering this call. He don't even know how the how the technology works. Dad explained to him for ten minutes. He kept asking questions. Did 
the motor is part of the truck. It's part of the suspension. It's not part of the wheel. It's not part of the wheel hub. It's not on the spare tire. The spare tire is a regular, sp is a regular spare tire. Uh, you know, this guy had just, he, he didn't get it. He didn't understand. Well, what about the extra weight? How are you going to stow that? Where, you know, uh, Steve Burns is going, it's a tire. It's like a regular spare tire. The motors are on the truck. The motors are, you know. Anyway, guys, see my other videos on this. I go into depth uh, about explaining these hub motors. Anyway, moving on. Uh, you know, then the analyst asked, where will the extra hub motor be stored then? You know, again, stupid, stupid question. A Wall Street analyst covering this stock, covering this company, asking this question. You don't need an extra hub motor. It's computer controlled. It can run on three motors. It can run on two motors. It can run on one motor. It's four wheel drive. The motor conks out. It's not an issue. You don't need an extra hub motor behind the seat. Oh, my goodness. Uh, now, the other thing they were talked about here and asked about was this advanced transportation loan, uh, ATVM, Advanced Transportation Vehicle Manufacturing Loan. Uh, it's a DOE loan. Tesla got one of these for $450 million uh, back in the day, 2008. Helped them launch their company. Uh, Ford got five billion from it uh, to uh, to build a new engine, uh, higher mileage engine technology that they're using right now. Uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, the DOA is, uh, DOE is considering uh, Lordstown Motors for this, and they've done the applications. Uh, the DOE has done the due diligence on the firm. They've come out and looked at everything or whatever it is they do. They have, uh, Steve Schmidt was saying, a minimum credit line they've applied for is $250 million. And this would be at, you know, basic treasury rates, you know, the lowest possible interest rate. And, uh, but uh, this is not for sure. And I have a, a video uh, that I did on the Aptera. It's about the Aptera founders. And it talks about the, uh, the stuff they went through with this same loan program and how they ended up not getting it. Uh, but anyway, this is not, this is not a, a, a for sure thing, but this is a big deal. I mean, if they get this, this is what really one of the things that launched Tesla. And like I said, I think Tesla got 450 million or 490 million right when they were coming out with the Model S. So anyway, uh, but that's not a sure thing, but, you know, they were, you know, the analysts brought it up, not the company. So, but uh, uh, somebody's talking to somebody about it. Uh, now, Goldman Sachs, uh, the analyst from there said, you know, this video you put out, of the this is with re regards to the Hindenburg report. Hindenburg said, oh, well, they can't, they can't, they can't build, they're going to two years away from building the betas. So Goldman Sachs asked the guy, was this a phony video that you put out of the robots welding up a, 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 a body and weight of the endurance pickup? And they said, no, that's the original, that's everything's the same, the stamping, the paint line, the robots, the production line, that's the, that's the one the truck's going to be built on. The only difference is it's going to be fa much faster, okay? Uh, but the point is, they asked them, you know, this is this Hindenburg nonsense. Uh, anyway, the point is uh, they asked them and they, you know, it's the same line, you know. Again, I don't know why these analysts even wait as if, you know, I'm not going to get into it. Okay, now they asked about uh, marketing plans. The, the one of the main things they're going to do is get these test mules out to the main uh, fleet evaluations for these main customers. And they want them to see the uh, see the quality of these trucks uh, because this, like they say, it's 99, 97% done. They just need to put the airbags in it. Um, on the letters of interest to 100,000 pre-orders with the SEC is investigating. That is, uh, I misspelled that. I'm sorry, I'm replete with misspellings and errors, but you know, I rush to get these things out. Uh, that's a small portion of the interest they have, they said. 
uh, they have 20k solid in mind uh, from this Holman. Uh, but, uh, you know, he said they have much more than 100K total interest. Um, they were being cagey about this. Uh, they said th they said they don't want everybody to think that we got 20K out of the 100K that we had interested. He said that 20K and that 100K is just a small subset of what they have, what they have, uh, what they have generated interest. They didn't specify that. They're, again, they're being cagey. But the point is, evidently, you know, they upped the production capacity from 20, they doubled their capex to up the uh, production capacity from 20,000 units to 60,000 units. And obviously they had a reason to do that. Anyway, what they're saying is don't even, you know, those numbers are rough estimates. We got, we got much more than that going on. And they were waiting to get these betas out. So they, with these betas out, these, uh, all these uh, fleet managers are going to get hands on. Anyway, they got qualified for the General Services Administration. So federal, they can sell the federal uh, clients. Uh, the municipalities are in line. The military is in line. They're not really even talking to them that much yet. Uh, Camping World uh, is a for sure. They're one of their business partners. So uh, they are funded. What he said was, we are fully funded to do 60K production in 2022 right now. And I'll tell you, if you read between the lines and you can listen to this call yourself and I'll just give you my interpretation of it. You know, uh, they aren't sandbagging, but especially with this SEC investigation and these other things that are going on, they, uh, they're not, you know, uh, I think uh, they are loading, as I say here, loading up for bear. They, I believe that, huh, I think everybody's going to be surprised. And uh, again, Steve Schmidt, the president, said they can't hire enough marketing people, you know, to even uh, take care of all this. So anyway, fully funded 60K capacity uh, production 2022, 20K this year, you know, starting in September. Okay, now here's one. Now, uh, they got, now this is a really uh, big confidence boosted, I mean, I want to say ballsy move by, by Lordstown Motors. They entered into the uh, San Felipe 250, and it's actually more like a 290 mile race. This is a Baja race in Mexico, and I got some video of it in a, in a, in a minute. They're going to enter a beta endurance in this race and it's it's not going to have any special modes it's not going to have any special batteries i you know they're going to have safety equipment on it i believe they're going to raise the i got a picture at the end of this i think they're going to raise the uh the, the wheels up and put a special suspension in it but anyway uh they're putting it all on the line you, you wait till you see this video uh burn says it's not going to be a start and park they're going to run the whole race they're going to push the battery. They think they can they can get 290 out of the battery. I think the battery is rated for 250 or 240. If they, and they say if they can do it without having to stop to recharge, that they're going to have a really respectable finish. And I told you I have a leak on that that this truck was running on a track at 120 miles an hour. Uh, so anyway, it's 290 miles. Um, anyway, this is as Steve Burns said. This is the proof of concept on the truck, and this is to show everybody, you know, all the doubting Thomases about um, what this truck can do. So, uh, and this is April 17th. So, this is in two weeks. We're going to all see. <laughs> I can't imagine they would enter this race if they didn't think they could finish it. Uh, and uh, I, I am confident. I mean, this truck is, you know, the other vehicles, Zilafi had this, these things on. Uh, you can see the videos online. I mean, these motors work well, and I think the design of the truck is, uh, you know, the frame is indestructible, according to the marketing guy. And, you know, they got the uh, four-wheel drive, and they got the uh, computer-controlled traction, torque vectoring, you name it. I mean, this is an advanced propulsion system. Conventional-looking truck very advanced propulsion system. This is the unique selling point of this vehicle, is this production 
uh, this propulsion uh, system. And I think it's going to show that it's uh, energy efficient as well. All right, now here is the, uh, here's some footage I have of this San Felipe uh, race. And uh, this is a previous race. Now you can see, I'm going to turn the sound down. Now there's some motorcycles in here, but these are just the flat sections. I mean, this is a 250 mile court. Look at that. It's famous for the whoops. Those are the whoops. And uh, this is all through the desert and everything. And uh, you can see these trucks, purpose built trucks going through and there's going to have an endurance. Now this is a wash. This is this Mexican wash area. That's a famous part of this course where they have to go over these really extreme conditions and rocks and things. And they have a Baja bug class, a classic Baja Volkswagen class in this race as well. But anyway, you can take a look at this and you can see these rock crawlers and everything. So I don't know. It's a uh, it's going to be a real test uh, for the uh, endurance. It's not a joke. This is like the baby Baja 1000. It's like the Baja 1000, only it's not as long. Anyway, the same type of vehicles run it and so forth. But you can see, in, and you can check online, um, big deal, big race coming right up. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of video footage. We'll see if the truck can finish the race without recharging. That would be a big deal, 290 miles. And we'll see how it performs. Uh, Hoping it'll do well. Like I say, I can't believe that they would enter this in this race without having done, without knowing that, you know, it was going to be a big performer. I, I think it will. I mean, from what I know of uh, everything about this truck, and, uh, and again, this uh, motor system propulsion system is a big deal. I think it's the main selling point of this truck, so. Here is the video of the, uh, and this was just out today. As they said, now the Hindberg reports that they're not going to be able to build these trucks for four years. The Goldman Sachs guy said, would you have a phony set up with the line? These are the trucks that came off the line. They built these. They stamped them beginning to end. Uh, full production line, automated robots, so forth. Here's the first beta. That's the first one. Number one. I think it's a pretty cool looking truck. I don't know, that paint job, you know? But uh, there's the first one. First EV pickup, full size EV pickup. That's it. There's number two, kind of looks like a Harley Davidson. That's the second EV pickup made in America, in the world, you know? So production, off a of full production line. And again, this is all done at Lordstown, the motors, the battery, the stamping, the paint, the assembly. There it is. There's Steve Burns. And you can see this is a big truck. And again, this is one of the vehicles that they're going to be entering similar to this uh, with the safety uh, altercations on it, uh, alterations on it rather, uh, for the uh, uh, San Felipe 250. There it is. So, okay, doubters. Okay, Hindenburg. There you go. Two betas down, 55 to go. So they made that deadline. So late September is the next one to go into full production. Anyway, that's it. I hope you guys liked the video. I tried to keep this short. Go to the end here. As I say, I got a leak down at the bottom there. Sources have told me all they have to do is hire enough people. That everything's ready to go. I don't know, they seem informed, that's the word I have. This is MXUX, thanks for watching the video.